Welcome to a very special edition of the podcast today. Uh, I'm here with Michael, who, um, if you watched episode one, you'll know uh, I talked about briefly. Uh, by the way, for context, uh, on episode one, we talked about how we got into YouTube, which meant I mentioned Mega Pikachu Dude. Hell yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, so long ago. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was a time in our lives that happened. Unfortunately. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so uh, we, we, we did quite a bit of those dumb videos together. Unfortunately. When we were about 10, 11-ish. So, similarly, you know, uh, 9, 10 years down the line, we are... Uh, Full circle. We are grown men, and we are here to talk about Pokemon. Grown. <laughs> grown men. We're here to talk about Pokemon. So let's go ahead and get this started. Um... I was going to, I had the idea to do this with Trent originally, but uh, Michael and I are much more familiar with this type of thing. Like, we keep up with the news and we talk about it to each other pretty frequently. So, we, I figured this would probably be better for something for him and I to do together, as opposed to something that I would do over voice call. So, um, this, and Michael's got his laptop pulled up. Uh, he's got a bunch of news and fucking whatever else. Yeah, I've just got everything up here. Is Feel free to swear, by the way, as much as you want. I don't give a shit. All right. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not we're we're not really gonna be like no PG. No, no no PG here. Um, no so parental guidance. Get them out of here, bro. Dude, parents, fuck that. All right. So, uh, just we're gonna talk about our hopes and expectations for Sword and Shield and what we think so far. That's the general idea. So, uh, you have. What you have pulled up? You have I have everything. Sobble. I, oh, you, I you have, have a, a bunch of tabs. Mod. Oh, dope. Yeah, I've got a few. Okay, so I've uh, also got the uh, the the leak stuff as well. But I think oh, most yeah. of that's generally been confirmed. Uh, most of it. Not yeah, all from of it, now. Yet, but. Also, uh, random side note: the um, that twenty four hour live stream is going on right now. Nothing exciting really has happened thus far, as far as we know. There's been like a rainbow horse spotting, and that's about it. So, I don't know what that means. People speculated Galarian Ponyta on Twitter. Oh, that'd be cool, though. Yeah, it would be cool. But again, more Kanto pandering. And that's something that... Yeah, we talked I, about, we talked about I'm that very briefly against earlier. the Kanto pandering. Right we now. talked about this briefly earlier, where... Um, earlier today, actually, where we were like... Yeah, you know, when, when they came out with Gen 7, it was like... They basically... All the Alola forms were Kanto Pokemon. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, we get that there's like a familiar... F Ugh. familiarity element to it so it's like yeah people are it's like cool it's a cool new spin on these pokemon we're all familiar with especially people who like you know maybe just played gen one and yeah. are now older or whatever um so it maybe picks up like intrigues them or whatever but it's like you have so many cool designs throughout the other generations exactly gen two gen three so we're both big fans of uh galarian zigzagoon because it's basically exactly what we wanted like you have this pokemon who was you know, not really viable in Gen 3 as a part of your team. And hey, then slave. Basically, That's yes. Line, That's <laughs> Ly Linoon was very good at that. And uh, so, and then now we've got Obstagoon. Um, you know, the Galarian Zigzagoon and Linoon, they both have really sleek, awesome designs. And then they went one step further with it by adding an evolution to Galarian Linoon with it in the form of Obstagoon, which is just awesome. Which is more of what we want to see, because we don't just want to see different forms. We want to see new Pokemon in general. It yeah, kind of, it, it gets dull, like, just seeing different forms of stuff. While it can be cool, we also just want to see completely new Pokemon added, too, sometimes. Yeah. Like, I mean, the, you've got all these this cool awesome designs. This motherfucker is to. awesome. Look at him. He's fucking cool as shit. I will say, this is just me personally, uh, yeah. the color scheme is not my thing. The black, I, the very, like... The, the black and, white and, and gray white shit. and gray. It's kind of dull to me, but I can understand how it can be appealing to people. Um, and the main Punk thing rock. is just that they're they're adding a new evolution five foot to him. Three. Five foot three. Is a show. short little good. You don't have to worry dude. about him stealing your girl. <laughs> Too short. Yeah. Other if, if he was only a hundred and one pounds, if he were, bro, if, I would throw him around. Dude, if he and was I'm scrawny, if he were six foot one, we'd be fucked. Oh yeah, we'd be out of here. <laughs> mm. So yeah, it's like we. It's like how you. It's like use your words. Yeah, I don't know how to do that clearly. <laughs> um... It's like, we just want to see more, like, new Pokemon for one. Like, we get those, that ideas tend to run out, right? Yes. Like, you know, you, you don't, not every idea can become a full-fledged Pokemon. Right, right. Because um, some ideas are just total but shit. But that's also why 
they should so you've got some lines where it's not completely full yeah like like it's only like one pokemon or two pokemon like what the hell are you going to do with your a uh, giraffe rig <laughs> Like, give that sucker something to make it more viable. Give it an evolution He's, or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, not only... You don't need to what just you create new that? lines. I don't know. A, a, a giraffe with a longer neck or something, dude. I don't know. And now it's got... Oh, oh boy. It's got two heads on its tail. And that's probably something they do. No, that is something they do. Right? But so, that that's what I mean, though. Like, we've got all these cool Pokemon. Or, well, not I don't know if giraffe rig's cool. But we've well, got these cool Pokemon. You know. That you can go further with. Like, you're talking about the possibility of... People are speculating maybe it's a, a, a Galarian Ponyta or whatever. Yeah. What if you added something past Rapidash? Give it the, the full three evolutions right. or something. Right, and Rapidash wasn't like... It didn't feel like it was fully on that level of being competitively viable. Right, exactly. So it, it, that extra evolution could could really it could, help Yeah, it, it could change that. Yeah. I feel like Rapidash especially is one that could have benefited from a Mega Evolution. I think so too. And I, I think, again, with the Kanto pandering, I personally felt like... I, I, I'd have to check the the statistics on how many there were, but I feel like, again, they primarily uh, pandered towards um, Gen 1 Pokemon with the Mega Evolutions, too, yeah. but not yeah, that, yeah, that, that doesn't matter anymore now, because we've moved on to a new gimmick. Yeah, we moved on to two new gimmicks. Well, yeah, one that gimmicks again. <laughs> it's really... <laughs> yeah. Like, we've got... We went on to Z-Moves. That oh, yeah. happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then now we're on to Dynamax. Like, why Did not... not like the, the Z-Moves, personally, and I'm not a big fan of the Dynamax and... I don't even know I'm how to say this. The gi- Gigantin- Gigantamax? Gigantamax? Gigantamax, I think it I is. think that's how you say it. This is not something kids can read. I think <laughs> this is rated... <laughs> ten, I'm, tw- everyone I'm 20 years old and can barely read it. I think this is rated everyone ages 10 and up, and I can barely read this. So Yeah, I'm 20 years old and can barely read that. Yeah, maybe it's easier to say in Japanese. I don't know. Maybe. Um, but I, Gigantamax. I think that if that's something that they went with... That's that racist, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but I, I just think if they were going to do something like uh, Dynamax and Gigantamax, th- th- it's so similar to Mega Evolution in a way. Yeah. That you should have just like, it's like you could have limited Mega Evolution already <laughs> and just like retconned it. It's almost like it's almost like Mega Evolution, but with like even like even less creativity involved because when you when you made Mega Evolutions, you had to at least make like yeah. a new form of it. Different but now designs. it's just. Uh, Dynamax. Charizard is very big. Yeah, they just get red and have these stupid clouds above their head. <laughs> and, great. and then you can get the Gigantamax, where some of them get changed forms. And I think, I don't know if it's confirmed, but I think there's rumor about Charizard having a Gigantamax form, which again, more Kanto that, pandering. Yeah. But right Corvinite now, looks kind of cool, though. The three confirmed ones are Corviknight, Dreadnought, and Alcremie. Alcremie? 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 Something like that. I feel like it's got to be creamy if it's right. like cake stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, I creamy. agree. That's what I'm going with. Corviknight looks kind of cool, though. Corviknight looks... He looks pretty Very dope. badass. He's pretty dope. Um, just in general. Oh, yeah. And then in the Gigantamax form, and he's got these... Um, like little red wings going on. Yeah, like the little bird things flying around here and stuff, dope. too. I mean, he's pretty cool. But I feel like, as cool as it is, they didn't really improve on his... Right. Well, like, they didn't really change the it's design. It's just the same of design. colors. Yeah, they just... So I don't know if that's even worth the Gigantamax. It made it look red. Yeah. Um, now, the Dreadnought, on the other hand, is a completely different story. <laughs> you're um, very, you're very, this, this guy, he doesn't, mm. We don't know where his head goes. He's like, just becomes a Cyclops or something weird. It's kind of hard. I don't, I'm not entirely sure what that is. We're, when we're looking at this, we're looking at the Bulbapedia image. I'm not entirely sure what that is. I'm um, a little confused. Not sponsored, lie. Bulbapedia. Uh, I don't feel like we, like, I don't, does Bulbapedia sponsor anybody? I have no idea, but hey. I doubt it. Hey, Bulbapedia. Help us grow and we'll help you. <laughs> Come on. Look, Get man. in. Come on, lads. Anyways, he looks kind of stupid. I'm just going to leave it at that. He's pretty stupid looking. If you're... I don't know if we can put these images on screen, but if... Just do a little bit of a quick Google, and you'll find what we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're pretty much just looking at the Bulbapedia page for Sword and Shield. It's got everything on it. Oh, Big yeah, yeah. Stuff. So. So, yeah, it's like... I mean, I want Dynamax to be good, right? I want yeah. it. I want it to be really good, but yeah. I, I just can't help but feel like it's just them moving on to another random gimmick where it's yep. like, and we're gonna oh, abandon it I in the next big. game, right? Exactly. It's gonna be gone in the next game. I wish they would take something and stick with it. That was what was cool with Mega Evolution: the continuity they, from X and Y to Omega um, Ruby and Alpha. Sapphire. Exactly. Exactly. Oris. So that was a lot better to see because it wasn't yeah. just one and done and, and, and you had a lot more you had something to look forward to because you already knew how it worked and stuff and I just think it's one of the cooler gimmicks that they've had oh yeah uh, personally oh definitely I mean like 
I, I don't know. I feel I, I, Mega Evolution is really cool, and I, I'm kind of sad they yeah, me they too. Left it. I think that what the there was the a lot more potential was, there that they didn't. Yeah, they, well, on. they should have been like improving. Firstly, Game Freak. I want my damn Sin Omegas, dude. If you don't give us Mega Infernape and all that shit, we're coming after you. I want my Sin Omegas. We're coming after you, dude. This is a polite request, and that is not a threat. This is all just. We're politely asking you to give us the fucking megas. I'm gonna kill you. That is not a threat, though. No, not a threat. <laughs> so, that's all I want to say about that. Um, about those guys. But, I mean, the, the thing with megas is I guess it, yeah, it made some Pokemon right. overpowered. But that's kind of the whole point of megas, and maybe we should have been giving that to more, like, we're talking about Rapidash earlier, how it's not super viable. Give it a mega evolution to yeah. make it more viable. Like, Turn that thing into a fucking Pegasus and give like, it some wings. Yeah, it's How like, dope would that it's be? It's like right on the cusp of being viable. If you gave it that mega evolution, boom, now all of a sudden you can use it right, on your team. Right. Because it's not. It's, it's Rapidash not that is great, a cool but, fucking Pokemon. Right. And it's like. It's like. It's like right it's at that underrated. level. It's at that level where it's not quite strong enough to be on your final team. If you gave it that mega evolution and that hundred more base stat points, boom. Yep. All of a sudden you can use it on your team. Yep, exactly. And you could say that about a lot of different Pokemon. Yeah. Too. So I mean, they're in. I mean, does does Mewtwo really need not only one two Mega Evolution but two? Do we? Does he really need one? I'm kind of. I I definitely disagree with the legendary Megas, and I'll say that right off the bat because I think those are definitely overpowered. I was yeah. I mean, I like the design of Mewtwo X and Mewtwo Y. The designs are interesting. The designs are cool. I was not a fan of. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Mega Latios and Latios because no, me either. They're the also same, the same, same fucking so. thing. Uh, Should have been different. Who knows? Maybe if those guys, uh, this has Gigantamax, they'll get the exact same form too. Uh, T pose, we'll see. Assert, it's like, it, that's what the Mega Lati, the Mega Pretty Eon, much. They did the T pose. Now the I dominance. will say I do hope that at least in this they they don't make that same mistake, so that we can bring it back to Sword and Shield, right? Um, where they they um, give legendaries like. The, the Dynamaxing or yeah. Gigantamaxing. I don't really know if Dy Dynamaxing applies to every Pokemon or not. I'm not I'm not entirely sure. certain on that either. I think it's certain I ones you catch in the wild for think, raids and stuff. I think basic Dynamax does, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure. It seems like it, because based on what we've seen in the trailers, you know, like Raichu's gotten a Dynamax, yeah, Pikachu, some, all this random shit. supposedly get one. Yeah, I feel like I feel like regular Dy I mean, like, all it is is just making the model bigger. Yeah, you just take the model and pop it up. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, speaking of the models... There's been enough shit talked about the the. We're not gonna talk too much about the national deck. Yeah, not any of that. That's that's already been covered by everybody. Yeah, and it's like I'm not, I'm not, I won't. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm not like upset about that or anything. Cause like I I understand there's deadlines that have to be met because Game Freak is not like they have to have a game out by a certain point right. for Nintendo. But so like I yeah. get it. So they have to have the, they have to prioritize the actual game as opposed to including all the Pokemon in right. the game. So I get it. So I mean, well, the issue there is that people have, I mean, pointed out like various similarities between the models of like X and Y and, and Oros versus yeah. that. So theoretically, they may be reusing the models, which is kind of a disappointment. But either way, they, they, they do if, have to upscale. If they're using that as their excuse, yeah. But yes, they do either way, they they do have to like upscale. Them. They have to like make new um, some new animations and stuff. So it's like. Like I get why they did it, and I'm not I'm not really mad about it. I don't really care too much. I'm a little different. I am a little bit more mad about it. Right. I, so, we, yeah. But that's that's good. Our opinions vary, and you get two different sides. Of yeah. It. So it's like I mean I don't. Yeah. It's never bothered me too much. Like I understand why people are pissed about it. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. But um, oh my flag on. <laughs> right. Um, but it's Give me like a flag on two game freak. Go go ahead. Uh. So it's um. Because I, I always prefer to enjoy the, the story of the games and, like, the right. actual games themselves, as opposed to, like, you know, finding, forming my perfect team. Like, that was always, like, a fun side bonus, but if I can't... That form, was always at the end for me. Yeah. It was, like, if I can't form the perfect team, that doesn't really take away the experience. In fact, I think it adds to the challenge, because I have to maybe pick out Pokemon well, that I wouldn't normally use. Using new Pokemon. Right. And that's another issue that I have, because I feel like there are a good amount of new Pokemon, but it also seems like there's a, a lot of old ones being used as well. Yeah. Which, I mean, obviously that's not a terrible problem, but I, I prefer to have just more new ones. I'm playing a new game. Right. The Like, the National Dex thing, I want that to come post-game. I don't want that during it. Mm. Um, yeah, I so, agree. But I definitely also just want to be able to use primarily the new new guys 
but make it so yeah. that it's easy to use just new guys. Because like for X and Y, it wasn't it wasn't a challenge, but you had to yeah the XP shift. try and use new Pokemon because there were so many old ones that would still get in the way and stuff. Yeah, I was gonna say you remember when Black and White came out and it was all f like literally the entire yeah. Pokedex po pre get like in the during the main game was all new Pokemon, which was awesome. Right, and I love that. Yeah, so it's, it's like, so much more to discover and it, yeah. it gives you like that childlike feeling. Of, of getting all this exploration stuff and yeah, discovering exactly. new Discover, shit, discovering yeah, new shit. Exactly. So it's like, yeah, I, I I want I want there to be more new Pokemon. I think that's probably yeah. one of the main things. Um, even like, because we we both are huge Sinnoh people. Yeah. Uh, um. So that when like there's a huge section of that like in the very late parts of the Sinnoh Pokedex where it's all just evolutions of previous right. Pokemon. You know, you got your Electivires, your Magmortars, exactly. your Gliscors. Those guys are dope. Yeah, right. So y they could be doing more of that and that would basically, you know, it's because it's not, that's not as hard as making an entirely new Pokemon right. from scratch. And that's why we're such big fans of Obstagoon because right. they're doing stuff like that. And yeah, that's, that's why we were talking about you how don't they have, still have you, that potential. You don't necessarily have to make uh, an entirely new, a new uh, line. a bunch of new Pokemon. You can just add to some of the ones you already have, because there are a bunch that could, like theoretically, have extra evolutions added to them. Look, bro, Sudowoodo. What is he good for? Nothing. Fucking Give nothing. him an evolution or something. Literally fucking nothing. You know, he was he was like in he was like on Brock's team in the show, and that was it. It was the only thing he did. Right. It was it was just kind of. Sudowoodo. And then the that was pretty good, wasn't it? I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. That's pretty on. That's pretty on point. I must say, I'm pretty proud of myself for that. So yeah, I'd like to see a little bit more of that. I mean, uh, there, there's definitely some cool Pokemon that only have like one extra evolution that that could, you know, two forms or whatever. They could definitely use a, a third, a third evolution yeah. or a form. Or and I'm and I mentioned this to you that it's one thing because we 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 both agree that we like um, some of the Alolan forms like uh, Sandshrew and Sandslash and then Vulpix yes, and Ninetales absolutely. so those are really cool and you know you're ta you're putting a new spin on some of the uh, familiar old Pokemon but when we I remember at, and I told you this earlier when I first saw the reveal of Galarian Zigzagoon Linen and then Obstagoon I was like you know when he saw Zig Zigzagoon it was like oh okay that's that's pretty cool you know yeah, like and then yeah because it was like a, a, the first Hoenn Pokemon that had gotten an alternate form uh, at least up until this point. And then, w but when, and you know, Lion King came, I was like, okay, cool. And then Obstagoon came out and I like flipped my shit because I was like, that's so fucking cool. They, they're they taking, it's like, it's kind of like, you know, proper evolution, right? Like in an alternate environment where they have a different typing, they are able to evolve one step further than normal and into this like punk ass fucking awesome dude. And, you know, that's a great idea. Like they should be doing that more. You know, I also think about stuff like, um, like, so on that type of topic with Surfetched, the uh, alternate form of Farfetched. Yeah. Um, is it, what a is it, it is alternate, right? Like it is technically a form of Farfetched or is it? Its yes. Own thing? I believe it's, I, I believe it's in. Okay. It's just interesting because form. it's got a different name. It um, could, you know what? That's what, that's what, that's you know what? what? It might be an evolution. It says I'm only... Not... It is an evolution, actually. So only Farfetch'd that have survived many battles can attain this evolution. Um, so it is an evolution. So I actually did not realize it was an evolution. Me and I think that's that makes it really strange that it drops the flying type just for fighting. So that's really interesting. But yeah. I was I was going to say... Um, I was going to talk about how I would prefer wait, for that to be an evolution. Wait, wait. Come back up. What's up? Go back up more. Okay, I, for some reason I thought it said flighting, and I was really confused. If they, like, <laughs> put mash two words together, and it was fighting flying, and we just never realized. How Lucha 2.0. Yeah, right? So Flying press? Dude, that move's so cool. But this is a good example of things that are good to do with, with like, um, uh, adding Surfetched. Yeah. It's it's nice. Look at and that fucking leak. It's, I like the shield, honestly, the leaf shield. Um, but that's stuff sword. like they did with... Um, Magnezone, where it could only be evolved in Mount what Mount Cornet, Cornet yeah. yeah, in, in Sinnoh, and I think they should do stuff more like that, so that it's it's it can explain why we haven't seen those evolutions before, yeah, because they can only evolve at like certain spots. And yeah, stuff. and that's kind of like how Obstagoon was, you right. know, like it, only in Galar where the Zigzagoon have an alternate form can they evolve into their third stage. So, I mean, that's a cool idea. The same thing with Surfetch, really where cool it's idea, you know, more like a. It seems kind of like I don't want to say medieval-y, but they have all the knight type talk, like yeah, knight, a noble knight, knight that fights fair and square. Exactly stuff like that. So, I I 
I like that though. Dude, like do you sometimes. use that pen? Do I use it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Shit. I take all my notes on it in, in college because we're good students. Mm. We love school. Education? Never heard of it. Stay in school and get a good degree. I worked a shitty degree and just get a shitty job until you achieve your dream of being a YouTuber. <laughs> Are we talking about ourselves here? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I mean, we're both, I mean, we both are after pretty good degrees, so. Yeah. I think we'll be fine. All right. Don't worry about it, though. Yeah, this is not about we, college. What we really are here to talk to you about is the extensive research we've done on Pokemon, which includes of pulling up approximately four tabs of, of, of information and just reading them. Four whole tabs. You hear that? You can you count that? Count, count. One. Yep. Two. Yep. Three. No, no, no. Three. Hey, this is naughty. <laughs> Four. So, I definitely, I, I am very excited to see, hopefully, more evolutions. Yeah, from I hope the they do that they more. Show. I hope they do that more. Because so that now, is fucking cool. I'm Look actually, at that, dude. I actually think that this Duraludon, I don't actually Duraludon? know how to say that. Duraludon? 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 It feels like... It, Duraludon? It feels Duraludon? like it should be Duraludon. Duraludon, I like that, yeah. Yeah. So, just going to start off by saying this. Personal opinion. Don't really care for the design. He, was he still dragon? I believe he's still dragon, yes. Okay. So, so now, I think that this is most likely a third evolution Pokemon. Mm. And then I expect that we'll get two prior evolutions, um, which I'm looking forward to see. Wow, he is really light. I was gonna say he weighs. He's five foot eleven, eighty eight point two pounds. That is very light, especially for much I weighed in like elementary. School. Especially I don't for know like if a, I weigh that much. I don't think probably not. I don't know weight. We were we were scrawny kids. I don't actually know. Like I have no concept. We were of that. both scrawny kids. But so I and I'm looking forward to seeing more evolutions of stuff. So yeah. I am a little bit worried that Corviknight might be a Skarmory type case where it's the only evolution. I would really yeah. like to see either a prior or or I don't I don't think there would be an evolution after if you, it. Yeah, because it, if it's the taxi service you know thing, how, yeah, because I, I was gonna there say would definitely be prior evolutions if anything. I was gonna say I feel like because it's that taxi thing, it feels like it probably is gonna be evolution. a one off. Yeah, or or yeah, or a one off. Yeah, and that's that kind of is that disappointing to me because I think he's. Really dope. He, did, he needs a, something to evolve into it yeah. for sure. I was also wondering if Dreadnought would be the same thing. I, I, I don't think, think so, but it. Yeah. I, 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 at least I he, hope not. He but reminds it definitely me looks of, like he reminds a me of Drud again. Yeah. Because like and Drud again was like this random one off thing. Because it, it looks like competent enough to like hold its own and stuff. Yeah. But it also doesn't look like it has a really like prior evolution. Water. Water rock. Water rock. Okay. So Kabuto type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or Probably even better, Tortoga. Oh, yeah, Caracosta. Tortuga, Tortu Caracosta. I don't know its name. Yeah, Caracosta is the second evolution. Yeah, yeah. Um, very very, very similar, bulky actually. Bulky looking. Bulky um, looking. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah, okay. So, I mean, some of the, po like, the the designs of the Pokemon, they, they vary. Like, there's some goods, and there's some, eh. How do you feel about Yamper? Yamper? Everyone says he's adorable. I think he looks kind of stupid. He... I think he looks He's just a dumb. fucking dog. Well, what's wrong with his eyes, bro? Something about his eyes just throw me <laughs> off, dude. That's the creepiest thing. Oh, okay, he's electric. I didn't know that. Yeah, he's electric. I'm not super familiar. And his ability is kind of disappointing because Ball, ball fetch. fetch, where he gets the Pokeballs, uh, is it either just in battle or walking like pickup? I'm not entirely sure. I don't know. Um, Crackles as it go. runs. Yamper's ability. When you throw a Pokeball at a wild Pokemon but fail to catch it, oh, it'll Yamper pick it up. As, I mean, I guess that, holding that's... an item, it'll. That's good it. early game. Yeah, it's good early game when you don't have a lot of money and you're trying to conserve your Pokeballs. Yeah. And I, I kind of hope that it would be a little more challenging than other games, but it still is geared primarily towards uh, kids. younger kids or, or they young have, teens and stuff. I really, I stand by this, uh, they should have a challenge mode. I think they should definitely add difficulties, and I think that that's something that people have been wanting for a very long time. Yeah. We shouldn't have to mod the game to get, like, randomized Nuzlocks and stuff like that for a challenging game. Yeah. I mean, Nuzlocks, you can still do that on your own without any uh, modifications to the to the game or anything. Yeah, and I don't... Because... And Nuzlocks are, like, inherently kind of stressful. I think... Um, I think they should just have, like, you know... You know, maybe you know normal mode for the, the the normal kids, easy mode for the noobs or whatever. Right. And then like, 
In addition to that, they should have the challenge mode for experienced players where it's like no EXP share, right. levels are higher than normal, et cetera, I mean, et cetera. You can argue that you can just turn the EXP share off, but I think that that kind of like... Yeah, it's it's kind of disappointing. It, the challenge. I feel like if we were to have a challenge mode, it should make it feel more like a proper RPG. Or I you know? still want like sometimes I still want the EXP share as well. Yeah, but I it's don't convenient. want it as strong. It's convenient. Yeah, like I want to level something up, but I don't want it as strong as like as it you was know, in X and Y. Everything getting the like full experience. Right. I don't want it as strong as it was in X and Y. So that's what I would say in the challenge mode. I shouldn't have to turn it off. I should just like or maybe you should, it should have like different. the the like take the form, like, as it was in Gen 4 and stuff, you know, where you gave it to a Pokemon, right, right. And, and it would gain experience that way. So I think I think, maybe, I don't think this is gonna happen in Sword and Shield, but definitely for future games, uh, difficulties is definitely something that you that's know, pe people have been, people have been asking yeah. that for goddamn ages. There's been some outcry for that. For sure. And, you know, that's and, you know, they, people, they should realize by now that, you know, a lot of their fans like Pokemon fans who are older now and more experienced, like yeah. they deserve that kind of thing and not having to go through a game that is kind of like, you know, specifically designed for kids. Like they should have that up. They it, it should be fair to a wider audience. They should have way. they should have the option to take that challenge mode. Right. So one thing I'm looking at when I look at Yamper uh, of the in-game footage, right? It just feels like he kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. Like he's very cartoonish. Compare, I mean, like, the, the whole game looks... I mean, that's how games look a yeah. lot of time. Cartoonish. It is. It's based off of anime and stuff like that. Yeah, so, but but I, mean, I feel like he just sticks out really I badly. Think the graphics look great, though. The graphics do look awesome, and that's why I think he sticks out so poorly, because he's just kind of like... There's nothing wrong with simplistic, but he just looks kind of dumb and, and stupid. I, Dude, I apologize he's just to a, the Yamper fans. He's just a fucking dog. Like... I get that he's cute. He is a little bit. I get it. But, like, he's not a... Very, like, he doesn't seem like a Pokemon. He seems like a dog. Right. So, I mean... I also um, think that the, the food Pokemon that they have, like, Alcremie and um, Poltegeist... Mm. Poltegeist? Poltegeist. Uh, I don't know if I'd really about that. That was, consider... That was the thing. Yeah, I know. I don't... don't wouldn't really consider that food, but... Well, that type of thing. I'm a little I think those are little... Or... I think they're interesting. Yeah, but um... I, I don't know. I'll cream, I gotta admit, Alcremie's pretty adorable. I like Alcremie. I don't like Poltegeist. Poltegeist. I'm not terribly impressed with that thing. No. Its speaking legs of, just look so unproportional of, how they think um, um, abilities that are not underwhelming, unlike Yampers, who is a bit underwhelming, this motherfucker right here... Cramorant. Cramorant. The Pelican dude... Who fucking every time? What is it? Every gulp time? missile. Gulp missile. Incredible. I laughed my ass off when I first saw this video. It is the funniest thing I've ever seen, and, and I love it. So, um, for those of you that are unaware, uh, prepare to be ability, enlightened. Cramorant's <laughs> ability is called gulp missile, as as we've stated. And after Cramorant uses the moves surf or dive in battle. It will return with a catch in its mouth, which is just the fish. Yep. Which I actually hope they someday make that fish into Pokemon. Or I, I think the fish should have been a wishy-washy for the um, yeah for the animation for it. And after it gets that fish, when it takes damage while in that state with the fish, it will actually <laughs> spit the fish <laughs> at its attacker and damage it. And I love it. It's excellent. I it's love honestly it. Really Incredible. awesome. Incredible. It's just incredible. super creative, and that's the type of stuff that we like to see. Incredible. It's not. It's not even just creative. It's just. It's just a fucking meme. And I love, I love the way it. that it's he looks too, because he just looks like an <laughs> idiot dodo bird. And I love it. He looks it. so dumb. It's I love it. So great. He's it's not. A, it's not dumb in a bad way. It's dumb in the best possible way. This is one of the Pokemon I'm most looking forward to 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 using. Yes, he's a flying flavor. water. Yeah. yeah, flying water reminds me of uh, Swana with the typing and, and yeah, yeah. similar colors and, and stuff. Um, Basically, is just Swana, but a yeah, duck Pelipper and, and not a swan. Yeah, definitely Pelipper. Pelipper. I actually would would like to see possibly extending that gulp missile ability to Pelipper. I don't know how many abilities it already has, so it might be. I don't know. Might have reached this cap. And, dri and, and, Drizzle is its hidden ability, I think. Yeah, right? something like so that. So it might. It's probably not going to happen, no. but it would definitely be interesting to see this. And I think some it, of these new abilities well, translate I, to other Pokemon. And I think it works better with him specifically because he looks so derpy. Well, that and like, because I think if you give it to Pelipper, he's got that fucking big ass like little, you know, the Pelican yeah. beak, and it doesn't quite work. He's as not going to well. choke on it as well. Yeah. 
Um, speaking of that, um, the two legendaries, Zashian and Zamazenta, they, um, we're not, we, we don't have confirmed typings for them yet, but, um, I don't, um, I don't know about y'all, but I am full Pokemon Sword. I think Zashian is I'm, I'm there as well. majestic. Um, uh, Zamazenta's, uh, fine. He just kind of looks a bit odd with the shield just taking up his entire face. Um, but, uh, Zashian is one majestic motherfucker, and, uh, he looks awesome. I mean, it is bizarre that he's got a sword in his mouth, but, um, I'm just mostly curious about how strong he'll be. Yeah. Because these two in particular, as far as, um, like, legendaries go that represent each game, they don't look like they'll be particularly strong. You know, like, compare yeah, them looks to can, looks can definitely and Paltia, be deceiving. you know, yeah. Reshiram and Zekrom. Like, these dudes don't look like they're particularly strong, at least in comparison. Cause, so I don't think they'll be, like... It makes you wonder what their importance is, too. Because, like, right. Dialga and Palkia represented um, uh, time, time and space, space respectively. Yeah. Um, and, and they're, like, most legendaries are literal gods. These guys don't really feel godlike to me. No. They're, they look really cool. They don't yeah, they feel look awesome. Like to me, they feel more like the the mythical Pokemon almost. Yeah, and you know they've gotten a little bit more uh, mundane as a like because you know it went from it kind of evolved from Mewtwo being the strongest Pokemon ever to Pokemon gods in Gen Four. Yeah, and then seriously. it kind of went down a little bit from there. You, they kind of uh, like they reached the point of godhood with as far as Pokemon go a little yeah. too early. Yeah, and now and, like where can you go so, from there? So then you they can have multiple. From there, gods. they've kind of like worked their way down. So it's. Like, yeah. in terms of, like, importance, These I guess. These guys are going to be, like, protectors of the forest or something. Yeah, like exactly, yeah, uh, yeah. Which, you know... Cool, I guess. Kind of cool, but not the same, like, weight or... Yeah. Or, like, if you don't feel, like, that the power that I some think, of the other legendaries Yeah, have. I think I'm most curious about their typing. Yeah, so... Um, I think a lot of the consensus... Is it Zacian? Is that... Zacian? Zacian? Yeah, yeah. Is supposedly going to be fighting, is what people are predicting. Mm -hmm. And Zamazenta is going to be steel. I personally think that it would make sense for both to have steel typing at I least. Agree. Because, I mean, the sword, you can't tell me that's not like steel or, yeah. or something. And same with the shield. It just feels like you can't have sword and shield without the steel. Yeah. So, um, and I also just feel like, I don't know. When I think of a fighting Pokemon, I really don't think of a, a four legged. Pokemon, like, they're not yeah. able to throw punches or kicks and stuff, yeah. really. It's a, I mean, Sacred Zashin Sword is, definitely fits with it. Zashin is able to, like, swing yeah, around. Swing a sword, but it doesn't really feel like the, the typical fighting type where no, we usually get, like, not. humanoid, or at least more humanoid type uh, Pokemon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think they look really cool. One thing that's also interesting is, you know, the two main legendaries that have represented games, it's like, it's pretty much from, you know, Gen 2 onwards, they've all been different. But these two are pretty much... They're very, they're, very they're similar. Very, they're like the same base design with, um, like, you know, a blue dog with, you know, Zashian's got the little wings and the sword in its mouth. It looks a lot more streamlined and majestic, yes. whereas Zamazen just got a little bit of darker looks color. More, a lot more defensive, but obviously yeah. that's the idea with both of them. So they have achieved their goals with the design. So I'm... Yeah, so it, it just kind of piqued my curiosity because, like, why intentionally design the two legendaries represent different games so similar to each other. So now, that's one thing. I'm referencing the 4chan leak here. There's um, regarding been a 4chan leak sword that and shield aware details. Of. All of this, has, most of this has been confirmed and it came out a while ago, and so this has been floating around. So, um, apparently, now this, this is not confirmed at all, No. but there should be a supposed evil legendary named Eternatus. E Eternatus? Where? Eternatus. Eternatus, yeah. Eternatus. Interesting. We don't really know how to pronounce that because we ha it hasn't been heard you yet. You need to wait for the anime to come out. It's not con confirmed or anything, but so, uh, like I said, a lot of these leaks, a lot of stuff from this leak has, has occurred and stuff like this. Right, because the, so. the first bullet point is your rival's named Hop, which was confirmed, and then you also have... Um, Whatever bed bead and bed a bd what bead bed bead bed we something and Marnie which were uh, both of which were confirmed. Yeah, and I'm the pretty sure one is Team name, Yell, so I know like, Marnie's a thing because uh, she's like the emo gf that was floating around fan art on Twitter for a while and then um, and then bead I don't know he's kind of looks like the asshole of the group. Yeah, definitely. Um, so he so he's of, real. Uh, okay, yeah. What's that redhead in uh, Soul Silver and Heart Gold? I forget his name. Yeah, I don't remember. Like, is it just? I think it was something simple like Jason or something. I'm not entirely sure. So I don't know if it was that easy or not. Asphalt. 
Yeah, that's what you always got to name. <laughs> yeah. um, but so, supposedly, and again, all speculation. Yeah, this here. is all 4chan leaks, apparently. Eternatus is the evil legendary, so people, because of the somewhat credible nature of this post, with a lot of the stuff have been being confirmed, um, people have been speculating that maybe the two wolves are so similar because they work together against the uh, evil legendary so they're like, so, so like two sides of the same coin, basically. Yeah, exactly. So so they're basically, they're not like necessarily rivals like how some of the others are. Yeah. Um, so, because um, I, I mean... I feel like Zekrom and Rushrom were definitely, like, rivals. Well, yeah, because, you know, black and white, they, yeah. they clash a bunch. Right, but sword and inherently. shield kind of works together. Like, inherently, the sword and the shield are, are both yeah. used by the, you know, by the wielded by the same person and stuff. So it would make sense that they would be, like, work together. Yeah. So, but the question is, what is this Eternatus? Is that going to be... Better look fucking cool, yeah. that's for sure. Is it going to be, like, the same type of thing as Zygarde, maybe? Mm. Hopefully it plays a bigger role. Um, so that's one thing that um, I uh, I remember thinking about. So, have I told you that um, that if you go through every single generation when they originally come out, you the only one that doesn't have a third version or sequels is Gen Six. Through is every, that X Y? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. So liter So you can go through every generation from when they were originally released. The only one that doesn't have the only generation that doesn't have a third version or a set of sequels is Gen 6, which is X and Y. So it never got a Pokemon Z, it never got, you know, X2 or Y2, whatever the fuck. Right. So, um, and another thing that uh, piqued my curiosity is that they, um, you know, people have been speculating for a while that, uh, you know, Kalos and Ga Galar are linked somehow. Yeah. The, um, usually it's that uh, big war that they had, that, that is what people are assuming it's right, like, cause, based you know, off of the real hundred-year war. Britain and France, right. Yeah. So, um, I think... And it, well, the other thing that kind of, like, furthered my curiosity into this topic was that both of the legendaries' names start with Z. Yeah. And that's a peculiar, yeah. peculiar naming yeah. choice, I think. Um, I don't know if that's ever really happened. No. Um, so. No, definitely not. So, yeah, I think that's a peculiar... Like, it, it was obviously intentional, right? Yeah. So, the, there's, there's got to be a reason that they did that. Yeah, definitely. Um, Have not even considered that. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of one thing that I was thinking about. I think... Um, I don't know that we'll get it in this game, but maybe in, like, whatever Sword and Shield sequels are, we'll yeah. see some kind of, like... If they have sequels, which I'm assuming... They probably they will. They will. Um, so... We'll probably get our Sinnoh remakes, and then... I would hope so. I would very much hope so for the... And then that. We're, the sequels. We are big advocates of the Sinnoh remake. But only if you give us Mega Evolution. I mean, I mean, I mean I'll take it either way. I'll, I'll take it either way. I will happily take it, because... Uh, give me my Torterra, bro. That's all I got to right? say. Dude, the, in like 4K, like the Infernape and Torterra. Oh, I'd love that, dude. Ooh, nut. I would love that. Dude, I would nut on the spot. Imagine that with like some, uh. absolutely just destroy my, they would, I would need to wash all of the, everything. Imagine <laughs> that with like some, some poking graphics though. Right? That'd be sick. Ooh. That would look so cool if, if you could right? have that like 4K with all that stuff. I mean, so that, sexy. It's a good looking game. I I mean, never. I played, the the baseline games. If they could get to that level one day, that would be awesome, right? And you know, the but only, obviously they have a bigger roster, a cast of Pokemon that they and, the, and you know that whole so o, that whole overworld as well. Yeah, that they have to design. So Sword and Shield's art style makes sense. I think it looks really great. Um, the art style of the Pokemon or of the surrounding area? Just the whole like the game in general. Yeah. I, okay. Yes. Um. And then, as far as the region goes, I'm really intrigued by it. I think it's one of the coolest design regions to date. I'm a big one fan of, of the, like, industrial uh, Like the steampunk parts of it. vibes? Yeah, I really like the steampunk vibes. I've always been a fan of that type of stuff. Yeah, so that's... And it's it's very unique compared to anything else we've gotten before. Because, you know, Alola was kind of unique in that it was, like, you know, really tropical and all that. Yeah, but this But this itself. specifically feels really different. Um, yeah, like a, like a good change of pace, and I hope that they they take that in a um, in like you know they really put their emphasis on that and make the environment and world feel like a real like re feel really big right. and really expansive. Because you know when 
But they announced something about the wild. Yeah, and you know when they announced the uh, the 3D camera, how you can twist, how you can change the camera now, yeah. it makes the world feel so much bigger. Because right. if you look at um, if you look at Let's Go, you know it was still pretty much top down. Yeah, top down. You're still confined by the the, right. the trees and stuff that they plant around yeah. you. The, you know, there's nowhere that you can go that that is not like already set in a, in a path for you. Whereas in the wild, I feel like. I mean, obviously, you're still restricted, but you can make your own path to yeah. get where you want to go. Even just from the gameplay we've seen in the trailers, the world feels way more expansive. Like, yeah. feels way bigger. Like, you know, even the roots, they feel like actual, you know, proper areas of nature that you can go wherever you want, as opposed to, like, these, like, linear yeah. things where, right. you, you know, sometimes there's, routes, sometimes, there's levels. sometimes there's two paths, sometimes there's not, and then you bas- you're basically blocked by trees on every side where they don't want you to go. It, it feels proper, like, uh, you know, people have made this comparison a bunch, but like Breath of the Wild, yeah. you know, when it's... That's, that's what comes to mind for me as well. Right. So it's like, that is, it makes the world feel so much bigger. Obviously, uh, Breath of the Wild, I don't know that anyone could make a world as big as Breath of the Wild's world. That is huge, but um, just the, the way it feels, and especially in comparison to the previous Pokemon games, feels really, really good. Yeah. So, I also... Hope that there's a lot of variety to the the wild. Uh, is that is it just called the wild? Um, the wild world, the wild. Yeah, like the overworld. You mean? Yeah, I, it's called the wild of of some sort. I'm not entirely sure. Wild, wild area. area. There we go. Yeah. So, I hope there's a lot of variety to it. I hope there's a lot of different like uh, uh, biomes or like uh, areas. I'm, I'm struggling with words here, but, but worry, basically biomes. Yourself. Basically biomes. Yeah. Different locations with different Pokemon. I don't want them all matched yeah, in the same it, thing. Um, I want some variety with the Pokemon. I don't want to always see... Because like we've seen a Milotic swimming around in the trailer. Yeah. So I'm just using that as an example. I don't want to always see Milotic swimming all around in the same spot. I want a little randomization and a little rarity to it. Yeah, and you know so, what? Which I feel like that's something they would include. Yeah, you know what? Um, <clears throat> did you... I, I know they've announced this like in some trailer, but like so the roots pretty much all have different weather settings. Um, that uh, basically occur randomly, where it's like, mm, yes, they, yeah, yeah, so they'll, that will affect the Pokemon to show up right. and the environment overall. So I think that's a really cool idea to have each of And it should have been, it should be weather based. Right. And, you know, because like sometimes it'll snow, sometimes it won't, sometimes, right. you know, sometimes it'll rain, whatever. Like that, and, and having that affect the wild Pokemon that show up as well is just really, like, clever. I mean, I think it adds a little bit more to the makes, game as yeah, well, because makes weather the is usually. Real. The only time you ever really use weather is one. It's a rain or snow route, mm-hmm. or like in in competitive uh, uh, battles and stuff. But the thing is, you could just use it more in the regular base game. Yeah, and, and I mean it'll make more Pokemon like like Cast Form, which usually has no benefits in the game really. Yeah, unless you're gonna carry like Rain Dance, Sunny Day, and and, and Hail, and then Weather Ball. Yeah. but do you really want that? Not not particularly. So it no. kind of. It'll be kind of cool, like if it's raining or something, then maybe you want to bring out your Swift Swim Pokemon so that you can get a little bit more yeah. uh, uh, um, speed on the other Pokemon. Or just or your Water-type Pokemon right. in general to get a boost in exactly. your attack strength. Uh, and, but then it, when the rain stops, because it doesn't need to be constant, mm-hmm. then then you can switch around your team more, and it, it maybe adds a little bit more versatility to, to how you can play. Yeah, and you know what? I think the design of the, the region as a whole is really cool, just because like I think the idea of going... Like say, I'm assuming we'll start like at the bottom of the. You know, it's like, so, you know, yeah. like a vertical kind of. Yeah, I thing definitely going think on. we'd start at the very. We bottom. start at the bottom, and then just working your way up like that, maybe maneuvering around side to side a bit, yeah. and then work like Pokemon League at the top. Right. That's just really cool to me. Yeah, I like that. It's like it just makes it feel like you're you know moving up in the world. Yeah, like just heading towards a goal where that goal right. is to, to be at the top, and it's it's metaphorical as 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 well as literal. Yeah. You reach the top, and and you are the. The best trainer, obviously, once you beat the champion. Yeah, and it's like and stuff, and and you also reach the top of the map as well. So well, there you go. And it's, and you know what? Um, I was gonna say, speaking of uh, getting to the top, um, there was a leak a couple days ago where they were talking about how um, the game's gonna have eighteen gyms. Yeah, this has apparently recently been corrected by Game Freak themselves. Oh, has it? I believe so. I saw a um something on Twitter, um. Yeah, look that up for me. Yeah. Um, I believe this has been, like, apparently whoever leaked it, Game Freak themselves reached out to them and uh, basically said, hey, this is actually not true. So, as of yesterday, 
by GameInformer.com. It looks like there will only be eight gyms, which are in the major league, but then I believe there's also a the minor, minor league, league, and the minor league will differ between Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. So that might be... Who are those trainers? It's, um... So now, on, uh... Bulbapedia, mm -hmm. I believe they're listed as um, gym leaders, but we don't know whether or not that's minor or or the major league. Right. Player. But we have uh, Bay and Alistair, which I believe they said were supposedly different by game. Yeah. So if they're talking about the minor league switching, then I'm assuming those are going to be minor league um, gym leaders. Right. Because I would assume that the main ones are going to be, uh, for the major league, will be consistent throughout yeah, and, the game. Yeah, and um, so I wonder, I, I have, I, you know, we genuinely have no clue how to, like, to know this at all, but, like, what would be, like, what are the qualifications for, obviously, I'm assuming you have to beat all eight gyms of the major league to mm -hmm. get into the Pokemon League, but where does the minor league play into that, you know? Right, well, I'm also, I, I was wondering if maybe it's kind of like, uh, you you have to work through the minor league before you get to the major. Right. League. Yeah, and that might be part of it as well. And you know, we don't know how many gyms there will be in the minor right. league. Which I, I think it's also eight. Is it also eight? Um, uh, it doesn't say. I think I, um, it might also be. It could also like be we, split where it's four minor league and four major league as well, which would right. be interesting. But we don't know the total number of the gyms. Um. Yeah, Pokemon Com Company clarifies there are not 18 gyms. It would have been cool to see 18 gyms. Um, given a really nice, like, Soul Silver, Heart Gold vibe. Right. And, which um, was awesome with having that many gyms. And yeah, that and, well, and, and, that, and that was just post-game as well. Like, you had to beat the game before you could get to the other eight. Right. It, it, that's, that's what was so awesome about that game, that there was so much content, and I hope they really improved the... Um, the post game on this as well because yeah. you know some of the others they haven't uh, the Battle Frontier did not really play out how everybody wanted it in uh, Oras and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, there I don't really know how much post game there was in uh, um, X and Y. Oh, there was the thing with the girl Emma. There was like some weird looker storyline. Oh yeah, that yeah yeah I, that was that's, that's, kind of bizarre. Honestly. Yeah. And then there was some pretty solid post game in Ultra Sun and Moon. Uh, Sun and Moon was kind of uh, like basically like pretty simple. Ultra Sun and Moon, it's kind of like Oros because in Ultra Sun and Moon you could um, use the Ultra Space to go and catch a bunch of legendaries right. and shit. Um, I never actually did that, but there's a good there's a looker storyline in Ultra Sun and Moon as well that you can do. There's an ultra there's a looker storyline in Sun and Moon, but the, I think the Ultra Sun and Moon version of it is a little more fleshed out. Um, I believe. I'm not sure. Um, part of the original Sun and Moon post game was catching Necrozma, but obviously Necrozma played a more prominent role in Ultra Sun and Moon, obviously being like that final boss, who actually almost murdered me. Fun fact. Uh, a lot of people had sh uh, struggling, sh were struggling nice. battling Ultra Necrozma. Um, yeah, that that's a... I, don't know, I know you never played Ultra Sun and Moon, but like this... What an experience that was. <laughs> I felt like I was on acid. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie, because it was like... You end up in, like, fucking megalo something, whatever, and then all of a sudden you're climbing some tower and there's this weird-looking motherfucker at the top Big who's boy. glowing and shit, and you have to fight him and he just wipes out all your, your team with one fucking move and you have to waste all your revives and shit. Oh, it was great. I had a great time. Uh, <laughs> I barely won. I think it was on my first try. It might have been on my second try. I can't remember, but I know he was at least very close to wiping me out. I did not purchase Ultra... Sun and Moon. Yeah, I, I was not big fans of, I of the original I purchased Sun Ultra and Moon. Moon, and then that, like, I think Ultra Moon, all the Ultras were a step up, honestly. Um, it's pretty, they were pretty similar, they were more similar than I expected, but the, the, the storyline feels a little bit more fleshed out, and, un, like, complete in Ultra Sun and Moon than it did in the originals. Um, that was, wow, like I said, I felt I was on acid playing that game. Jesus Christ. Because it was like going through Sun and Moon all over again, but like not quite the same. So it felt like I was just playing Sun and Moon, but on acid. <laughs> Good way to describe yeah. it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was that was that was an experience that I had. But uh, other than that, like you know, the Galar region itself looks great. Um, I like the inclusion of a bunch of different rivals. Yeah, I think um, that's a little more interesting. It's kind of a throwback to black, black and white. Because I'm, uh... I'm glad it's not just fucking hop. He's like your he's like your best friend. Yeah. He's, he's not like it's like how how was such yeah. a disappointing ride. He's kind of boring. Yeah. I still like you know Barry bumping into you and then trying to find you and stuff like right. that. Or like the more like he's one of the more memorable rivals. Let's get some more of that. 
I mean, Hap is Barry, so... Barry was interesting. Hap is so just, like, boring, and he's just, like... Yeah, he's just how He's 2. really one-dimensional. He's how 2.0. I mean, we don't really know much yeah, about him. Definitely, Hop seems the same way to me yeah. right now, but we don't have any uh, info how, on that. Yeah, so. how, Hop just seems like how 2.0. Um, but, again, we can't really say that for sure, but that's, like, based on the gameplay footage we've seen in, the, like, the brief dialogue, it's just like, wow, we got phones! <laughs> it's just, oh... But then, like, the inclusion of bed, bed, de, bed, de, boo, de, boo, de, de, bed, de, boo, bed, bed, de, bed, oh, de, bed, bed, de, 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 this this dude with the curly hair, he seems kind of like a stuck-up asshole, which I'm glad we got because we haven't had a proper stuck-up rival since, like, when, like, Gen fucking 2 or Gen 1. That's what I was kind of thinking. So it looks like, um, so it says that his name is similar to his Japanese name, so I'm assuming it's pronounced Bede. Bede, yeah. Even though it's spelled B-E-D-E, but, uh, right. if, it's sim- if it's supposed to be similar to Beat, then I'm assuming Bede. Yeah. And then, um... The one thing I think I'm really disappointed about about Pokemon Sword and Shield this far is like, you know, at least you can expect like an evil team to fight. Team Yell seems just like a massive pushover. Um, this guy right here, he's he's spitting facts. Yeah, it's like, okay, I will say that Team Skull had its flaws, but like Team Skull was um, a good not a fan. Team Skull was a good twist on, um, and I think worked for Alola. Because the overall vibe of Alola felt like it was a... It did work for Alola. It was, a va- it was like a vacation, basically. It did and work I, for Alola. You know, Alola, Team Skull, you couldn't really take them seriously until Guzma showed up. Um, then Guzma basically wrecked your face with that Golosopod. Jesus Christ. Um, thing's a monster. But, um, yeah, you couldn't really take Team Skull seriously until Guzma showed up. And then... Because they were basically like these guys who went around fucking rapping at people for yeah, no reason. And that's they, really intimidating. Yeah, really intimidating, spitting rhymes and shit. Um, so you could, but I think it worked for the setting of Alola because it like wasn't quite as serious as right. your, your standard Pokemon game. In this case, Team Yell, they're all they all they are is just like we they're love big supporters. Marnie. Yeah. We love Marnie. Like it's kind of it's kind of lame. It's kind of a letdown. You know, you I know, really miss like the evil plots of right. like like Team Galactic, Team, Team Rocket, Plasma. Team Plasma. Team Plasma was good. Yeah. I like their. Uh, I mean, they had a, a somewhat reasonable motive of liberating Pokemon and stuff like it that. It kind of made sense. Yeah, but and that's that's how you make a good villain. They were the Thanos of Pokemon, right? Team Plasma is Thanos. Confirmed. They're just doing what is best for the world, right? You know. So I mean, I was kind of hoping to have a team with a little more motivation than they really like someone. Yeah, I feel like that's know, kind of a boring. It doesn't really make, motivation. It, may, it doesn't make them seem like a threat at all. Like even less than Team Skull. Right, and it doesn't feel like something, like it. It does. It just feels more like a nuisance than something exactly. that really needs to be stopped. And I feel like that was what As was so cool about. As opposed to a cool proper about. threat. Yeah. Right. That's what's so cool about a lot of the other villains. I mean, Team Skull is obviously its own kind of thing. But Even Team Flare, it was like subpar. Was like yeah, they they, they felt threatening at least. Yeah, but I mean, they weren't super crazy, but it, Team Flare themselves did not feel very threatening, but Lysandre. No. Lysandre? Lysander. Lysander? Yeah. Some Anyways, fucking pronunciation. Um, I think, no, you said it right. Lysander yeah. for sure. Um, he, he was definitely, like, intimidating on behalf of the team, and he yeah. had, like, the whole goal of, of you know, what was his goal? <laughs> uh... So he's blowing something up. Blow, yeah, he used some fucking machine blow shit up. I think he was using that uh, machine that was used. Yeah, in he was powered war. by yeah the th- powered by three thousand year war with that seven yeah, exactly. foot moron who reunited with AZ. a flower at the end. Yeah, AZ. he's like it's been three thousand years and it was just a fucking flower. Yeah, it wasn't even a Pokemon. It was greeting a flower. Fluette. It wasn't even a. Po- it was just a fucking flower. It's been three thousand years. So yeah, but I mean, it just cl- shrivels up and dies. Even though Team Flare was a little underwhelming, that was still a, a pretty interesting. Like it was a more threatening. Uh, it felt like a more serious deal than yeah, even than Team Skull for sure, and then even more so Team Yell. Like Team, Team Yell is not only a stupid name; it's also I agree. like yeah, it just fucking sounds stupid. But um, it's just like it, it. They're just like we love Marty. Like I, I, I get it. Believe me, I get it. She's a cutie pie for sure, but that doesn't mean like, you know, when you're supposed to have an evil team or some kind of, you know, anything that's supposed to feel like some kind of threat to you, 
you don't have them going around basically just like we love, we love other Marnie. competitors right. and stuff. Right. And like, you know, and that basically makes Marnie who seems from the dialogue we've seen kind of seems like, like this emotionless stoic character. It makes her the um like the de facto leader of Team Yell, even though she actually really doesn't have anything to do with them. Right. And that just kind of is awkward. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it's really not my thing. I, I mean, it's not like I feel like because they're not threatening and stuff, I mean, what are they going to do, yell at me? I mean that's their name. Exactly. What are they gonna do? <laughs> yell at me? Like what? What threat? Do I wouldn't. Really I wouldn't tempt see? them. I, I mean, tempt them. They're probably pretty loud. I bet. I bet there's gonna be like maybe a dumb twist or something. Like, oh yeah. no, Team Yell is trying to take over the world on behalf of Marnie or something like that. <laughs> and it's just gonna. And then you're just gonna like. It's kind of gonna fall flat and just be like. Be what? that. Beat them in three seconds. Yeah. Like who came up with this? Yeah, I, I can see that happening actually. Right? Like having them like because I mean try right, to take over the world or some shit. Right now they don't have any like threatening no motivation at all. Threatening characteristics or anything. Yeah. Yeah, and they really don't have any it's like motivation any, except anytime, for their love for her. Anytime and it's like anytime you battle against Marnie, they're in the background holding signs and shit. Like yeah. it makes them look fucking pathetic. Right. It's kinda it's kinda lame. Now, one thing I do like about like you're talking about the background there. The environments for the battles are really just oh, just really nice looking yes. and stuff. Yes, and they it, are. It seems like they're really trying to immerse you more in the world. Whereas, I mean, we've, we've come a long way where we've just had little discs that they stand on and just, you know, attack from one disc to the Pokemon yeah. and the other disc. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, and, I mean, slowly, slowly but surely they've been adding environment and stuff. And, and, it, and it looks really good in this game. And it just looks like... Yeah, and it, it kind of was that way in it Let's just Go. Fits as, well. It kind of was yeah. that way in Let's Go as well, and then this is kind of like this kind of fits more seamlessly into yeah. the world because you know the overworld looks that way as well. Right, right. So yeah, I think just the world feels much more immersive and complete. Yeah, definitely for sure. Uh, and that's one thing I think is one of the main like main really good things they've done with Sword and Shield. Like just the world really feels like complete and immersive and just like you want to go out there and like see what's out there right explore no go ahead oh, I was, I, okay yeah, well I was so one thing that I, I just came to my mind that i think was be really interesting um i don't think anybody's even talked about this but i i'm curious how they're going to handle shinies in hmm. the overworld will it be after you encounter them or will they be shiny running around there were that'd be really cool and let's go with shinies running around yeah yeah Okay. I believe so, because I remember seeing um, a couple shiny encounters, like YouTube videos and shit. Okay, and it was like you know people were. Um, I, I like that. Yeah, I it's it's like really that. cool. It's really cool because I remember, um, I, whichever one I watched, I, it was someone looking for a shiny ponyta. Okay, and uh, you know that blue fire and shit showed yeah. up in the overworld. It, it was like, awesome. Yeah, it was so cool. Um, and that was one of the thing I liked. One of the things I liked about Let's Go is having the Pokemon in the overworld, and I'm glad they're keeping right, that in Sword right. and Shield, because um, again, it makes the world feel more complete as opposed to just walking around. In it's the more tall, immersive for sure, right? And it, as opposed to just walking around in tall grass, right? And the Pokemon just jumping out at you. I mean, I, I still ne don't necessarily dislike that, honestly. Right. But this way, definitely saying, is an improvement. Not for saying sure. that's bad. Right, right. Right. It's just like you know cuz that's how pokemon worked and you know that was what basically all they could do yeah at the i mean time. this this is just imp improving on yes. already i mean there's nothing wrong with the characteristics but they're making them better yeah and it's just like it, it, like like we said it just makes the world feel bigger more immersive complete i that like i said i'm very a very big fan of the environment in the world of yeah. sword and shield it's give just, me some vr and put me in the world dude right so i start that's walking around and shit I mean, you would eventually walk out of bounds. Like, you'd walk out of the room or something, or run into the wall. That's why you get those super expensive treadmills that, like, stay in one place, and it, like, you know, it can rotate, and you just... That's what it's like. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. All right. You haven't seen anything no, like that? No, dude. That's awesome. We'll look, we'll talk, we'll look at that later. It's pretty <laughs> it awesome. Pretty fucking VR cool, treadmill, dude. I think that's what it's called. VR treadmill, I, that is a it's new one. Pretty cool. I'm never... surprised you haven't seen that. That's, that's, uh, the idea that's been around, I think. I think Interesting. It's been created. You know what, I, I feel like that's, um, yeah, I feel like that's definitely something that so, could uh, be, it's could gonna be, be super expensive. Oh, I bet. So not How to, like, you point. replace your entire floor with yeah. fucking treadmills? Well, it's like, it's, yeah. so it's like one... Mm. It's, it's like the the size you guys can't see this, but the size of the table we're using, I think maybe probably a little bit bigger, and you know it goes. It's like a ring that goes around you. Sorry, uh, 
heavier people. Um, <laughs> it goes around you, and there's like wires that hold you in place, so that you're kind of like, I think like oh, floating in a way, okay, and then you're running. So gotcha. Yeah, it's like that. You've probably seen that. Okay, yeah, I think I have seen that. Uh, That's interesting. It's it, it's called a treadmill, although it's not really like a, it's a not treadmill. A particular. It's not the treadmill, treadmill that you think of at the gym. Um, it's definitely different. For the small number of you that work out. Yeah. I haven't. I mean, I work out, but I don't run on the treadmill. Oh yeah, yeah, I work out. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I work out. Look at them arms, really dude. Strong. Mm, yeah. The, they those are lifting. Uh, what? Two hundred fifty. Yeah. Okay. Bench in two hundred fifty. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now, pressure's on. <laughs> okay. Don't please don't give me any weights. <laughs> It's like the moment you have to pick up something, it's just like uh, my stick arms break. Now I'd like to see this. Speaking of strong, I'd really like to see this Roly Coley, which I love the name, evolve into something strong, dude. He better. It, it's giving me Bulldor vibes. Um, I kind of like it. I'm not. I like lie. it though. I really like it. In uh, yeah, Steam it's, Engine, it's like Rog and Rolla. Steam Engine is a new ability. Uh, speed stat boost when hit with fire or water type move during battle. Really cool with the water type move. Yeah. Speak to that, so it's uh, that's awesome. You know, it really kind of you got to either make sure that you're gonna you know faint it with your water type move, or, or else you're gonna end up giving it a speed boost. Which obviously, I'm assuming this to not have a lot of speed, as yeah. as, as is typical for rock types and stuff. Yeah, yeah, he looks really cool. Um, I yeah, he better. I, I think it's gonna be a really cool Pokemon. Yeah. And the fire type move, I mean, the, the moves like that are always fun and competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, when you can like switch into stuff and and. Uh, predict your opponent and, yeah. and get in on that and stuff. So that's that's really, I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say. So what about the starter evolutions? Do you have? So yeah, I have that here on the. So Fort. the starter evolutions, according to the four chan post again. League. So supposedly, and there's been a lot of theory regarding this. I think in concurrency with this post or prior to the post. I'm not. I can't remember when this post came out. So May 2019. Um, so yeah, I don't know when the, all these theories came out, but, uh, I've definitely seen a lot of these before. So, Grookey, um, this is probably the one that's a little mm. interesting to me, not really my thing. Um, and I was rooting for Grookey from the beginning. Yeah, same. But now I'm not so sure. So, supposedly, not confirmed, speculation, so put your tinfoil hats on and we're conspiracing. Conspiracing? Conspiracing. Is that a word? Conspiracing? No. Conspiracies. We are <laughs> also performing not a word. conspiracies. We are theorizing conspiracies is what we're doing. We're conspiracy theorists. So conspiracy theorization on 4chan. is what we are occurring in. Anyways, <laughs> on so, 4chan. According to this, Grookey will end up as a giant gorilla that beats a wood drum to attack. And I think there's the whole, you know, we've got the whole punk rock that, feeling with Obstagoon and, and the Zigzagoon looking like, you know, members from the band Kiss and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's not, it's not quite, unplausible right. for it. But Although it's not it, really, doesn't, it doesn't quite fit with the vibe. No, it's not really my thing. And it feels... It also doesn't, yeah, it like, doesn't feel legit. I mean, it it's, feels a little more primitive than, than punk rock yeah. type thing. So that's... I also don't know how you would go about beating a drum to attack. It just, it just feels like a, a Donkey Kong... Uh, uh, Super Smash, you know? Yeah, right. Is what it feels like. Final Smash, yeah. Right, right, Final Smash. Um, um, yeah, it doesn't... I, I, I would take that one specifically with a grain of salt, because, I mean, I... I, I we guess, will see, though. We I, will you see. You know what? His, those little sticks that he has, I could see those becoming, like, a, a vital part of his... You right, know, and that's, or that's another right reason people are kind of thinking, you know, he's going to be, like, uh, Alakazam picks up two spoons from his Kadabra evolution with one, you know? He's gonna get yeah. two sticks and then gonna beat some some drums yeah. and beat some other Pokemon. Not quite sure how that would work, but uh, I I could see it. I hope it is not true, though, because I'm not really a I'm not a big of fan of it as well. I, I think that but music is not really a good attacking type thing no, in, in a game like this. No, not really. Um, um, but on the other hand, Sobble looks pretty cool. So, yeah, Sobble is really interesting to me. And I, I, so I wasn't initially... A Sobble fan, but I think that's where I'm kind of headed now. So Sobble will... These are the supposed names of its evolution. Sobble will become supposedly Sizzile. 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 Sizzle. Sizzile. Sizzle. 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 Something like that. Something like that. Um, and then Inteleon. And obviously Inteleon sounds a lot like Chameleon. Well, no, it does not, actually. Inteleon. It looks a lot like 
chameleon and spelling with the ending. Yeah. <laughs> Intellion and chameleon, I guess if you spell it like that, say I like mean, that. Intel, chameleon. Yeah. So, and, I mean, that name alone, again, not confirmed, but that name is really giving you Intel, chameleon, a lot so, of spy vibes is yeah. what they're, they're pro projecting so and So spy here. theme. It seems yeah. interesting that they would take it in, in that direction given the fact that, you know, Sobble's been, like, the one who's, like, shy and cries right, all the time. Right, but, but that's what also makes sense because, I mean, if you look at the uh, official Pokemon um, description of him, he goes invisible in water. Mm. Um, and he yeah, can also, yeah. he can literally... Um, he will secrete the water within its bo within his body like sweat and disappear into the surroundings because of the water. So he can so use I the do, water I do of kinda his hope, sweat to I do, do that. I do kind of hope that's a thing. I, right? I kinda it would be kind of cool. I do kind of hope he evolves into those cool. things. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, so it does seem like a... Wow, yeah, I gotta say... A bonds lie with the, uh, I gotta the say, tears and stuff, the crying. Yeah, right, and I, you know what, I think that would be awesome. I don't know what else I would want Sobble to be, because that makes um, sense given... So, now, some people were theorizing the Loch Ness Monster as a space in the UK, mm. but I can't see... No, I wouldn't see I can't that. see Sobble if evolving any, into, like, if anything, something like I that. Would, it's definitely very lizard-like. If I would, if anything, I would say the Loch Ness Monster would be, like, a Pokemon, like, another yeah. Pokemon that they designed. Kind of like Gyarados. Yeah. Similarly, but, um, which would be kind of nice, because... I'd like to see more, like, legitimately viable Pokemon, of course. I mean, you get them in every game, but I want some I want some stuff that can compete with the roles that are already out there of, like, like Gyarados and Garchomp, stuff right. like that. Right, yeah. And, uh, yeah, as for as for Grookey, I'm not a huge fan of the, the drum beating. I don't know what no, else I would want to evolve it to evolve into. I definitely like a, like a gorilla, of course. Like, right. I'm, I'm really feeling a gorilla. Kind of like some uh, Pansage uh, vibes. Remember Pansage from... Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, what's the second evolution? Simi Sage. Simi Sage. Simi Sage type vibes. Uh, not quite. Maybe kind of like a mix between that and uh, uh, Chestnut kind of mm, like yeah. big but monkey like. Um, that might be kind of cool. That would be dope, right? So I mean, we might still get that, but we might still see the drum or whatever. But yeah, we'll see. we don't know. Um, and also, so I mean, I definitely just disproving the Loch Ness monster thing. Not disproving it, water but lizard. giving my yeah my two cents. I water mean, it's lizard. called the water lizard Pokemon. If you ever seen videos of chameleons holding whatever people try and put in its hand. It's great content, and you should look into it. He's got hands like a little chameleon. Gonna oh, grab yeah, some yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I've seen people give their chameleons little model battle axes and stuff. It's pretty fantastic. Anyways. And then Score Bunny. Score Bunny. So, um, I believe that's... A, the, I believe that in the um, 4chan post there's a typo. It does say Score Bunny will have fighting moves, but it's pure fighter. I think they meant to say pure fire. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would sure. hope it's not pure fighting. Yeah, because we've never starter. seen a yeah we've never seen a starter change type lose its original typing. Yeah. So we definitely think it will be pure fire, and I like that it won't be fire fighting because we have enough of that. But I do wish that they'd give it. I mean, if it's still gonna have, I mean, look, if it if it looks like fire, if it looks like fighting, then it's fire fighting. I don't care if it doesn't have the typing. They're still giving us the same type of thing, but the only thing is, this might be more viable than other firefighting Pokemon because now it doesn't have that uh, extra weaknesses and stuff like that. Yeah. Although it does not and get it, the stab. Yeah, from I was fighting. gonna say it doesn't have stab from the so, fighting moves anymore. So it depends. But I mean, I I really like to see some different combinations with that. I guess it depends on how its design, right? Yeah, definitely. Because it's like definitely. if it if it if it looks like you know some like karate right we might get another humanoid fire know, type Pokemon. rabbit ninja or some, right. some shit like you know you're gonna want that to be a fire yeah so now the speculated speculation on uh what his um it'll become raboot 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 that's again speculation um i don't remember humanoid. i don't remember the final evolution yeah there you Incredible. go thank you for chan poster um anonymous so what we what a lot of people do believe is that we will see uh, Scorbunny become a like a soccer type Pokemon. Mm. I mean, rabbits have notoriously big feet. And soccer uh, good is for big soccer. In, big in England. Yeah, soccer is a big sport there. Football. We've got all the yeah football. We apologize. Yeah, us bloody Americans. Bloody Americans. That was awful. That was, I apologize. Yeah, mine was um, too. Please don't hold me to that. Yeah. I can do better. Um, so. Let's I mean, that's Americans. plausible because, I mean, we have all the arena type stuff. We're talking about uh, possible major league, minor league type stuff, yeah. which, you know, soccer's got that type of stuff. They've got different levels and stuff like that. We've got all the arenas and that type of stuff, the tournament style type things. So definitely a possibility that becomes a soccer type Pokemon, but I don't really know how that would play out. I no. feel like the soccer part would kind of, 
like it would work for the region, but they won't make that part of its identity. Right. Because it would not really translate well to other regions. No. Yeah, and I was um, I was going to uh, speak. You mentioned the tournament stuff. I, that was one thing I wanted to mention. The Pokemon League, there's no Elite Four. It's all the tournament style stuff, which is... Is this confirmed? I believe so, yeah. Okay. So, um, that is awesome. I think that's a great idea. And um, we were talking about this before. The Elite Four are largely forgettable yeah. throughout the games. It's like, you know, when you, when you think back to it, like, especially games like... Um, Black and white, and then X and Y. Like, if I asked you to name every one of the Elite Four members from Yudav and Kalos, I, I know I couldn't fucking do it. Mm-hmm. Me either. Um, so I'm... And um, as we've seen uh, in the show, the tournament-style stuff works really well. So, like, I feel like that using that concept in the games is a great idea and works really well with, like... You know how they're treat Like, it feels like the Pokemon League, they're treating it as an actual sport now. Yeah. So it, I feel like that works really well in the context of this region and how it operates yeah. so i think the tournament you know you'll probably run through all your rivals at some point and then run and then eventually end up with the champion yeah i think it's also a lot more interesting too now something that would be really cool is if they took this tournament style mm-hmm. and applied it to multiplayer online and you could have online pokemon tournaments amongst yeah. your friends and stuff like that now that would be really cool yeah um so and speaking of online so the only way to get these, uh, the Dynamax and Gigantamax, I don't know if it's just G- Gigantamax or both, I have no um, idea. is supposedly through four-person raids. Oh, so yeah. now this is a concern of mine. So supposedly there will be local multiplayer, but there's, you can also do that online. So I hope that if you want those, I don't know if they can be done solo. I would assume possibly. Yeah. Um, because firstly, it's kind of ridiculous. You either have to have three other friends. Good luck, pals. <clears throat> all right. Three other don't have friends. Any of those. Yeah, what's that like? Three other friends with you in the same room for you know land connection, or you got to have um, online services, but that means you have to pay for the Nintendo Switch Online, uh, which is five dollars a month. No idea. Uh, I don't no fucking. Care. I have no clue. I think that's what it is, which comes out to about sixty a year. Same as about Xbox Live. I'm not. I don't know about PlayStation any of that. But so it's kind of disappointing that in order to do, in order to have, I mean, even possibly just battles. With Pokemon, what was originally free, you may have to be paying just to experience part of the online. Yeah, uh, and and such like game. and such like a, pro, like you know, Dynamax has been like showcased as a, a main part of this game. Like, yeah. if you don't get to experience that without you know paying every month or having a bunch of friends with you, like it's just kind of it's inconvenient for yeah. one, and then it's just like you know not being able to experience that part of the game yeah. just because, you know, maybe you don't have any friends. I know I don't. I'm sure they'll I'm sure they'll curve it somehow. Maybe it's scaled off of how many people you have and stuff. Or, yeah. You know, maybe, uh, I don't maybe know, it'll be at a set maybe, level. But maybe, maybe send out a, four Pokemon at a time. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe it comes out at like a, a set level and depending on how many people you have, it gets stronger and you get yeah. a higher set level. That might be a good way to do it. Scale it with the amount of trainers and stuff. Um, and I, I just really hope that the the game isn't too easy, and that it, it the, there is a little yeah, bit of that's a challenge a, that's for a, stuff like that. That's a a big concern. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think other than that, like, I just, I mean, more than anything, I just, you know, given that we have such a cool region and cool like overworld combined right. with the battles and stuff, mm-hmm. pretty decent like rivals. The champion seems kind of bland, but you know he's there. Um, you see that cool looking one? The oh, dude with the fucking second. cape on him. Yeah, he looks kind of cool to me, though. He's pre- no, he has a great design, he, uh, but like given the dialogue we've seen, he's just like not terribly interesting. Oh yeah, Leon. Yeah, Leon. He looks pretty cool. I like his design. You know, his people design people have speculated he's related to Iris. Well, I mean, he does have the hair, but what, yeah. what I don't like, Charizard. Really, dude. We really got to keep up with this Charizard. I love Charizard as as much as the next Charizard lover. Okay, maybe not as much. Maybe not as much. But. Come on, we've got all these other lot cool of Charizard. Pokemon to use. I get it. Charizard is cool. He's a fire dragon. Not even a dragon. Yeah. He's a he's a fire bird, essentially. <laughs> he's a cooler Moltres, okay? Right? At least That's he's not a fried chicken. Stuff. At least he's, he's not a fried chicken. He's, yeah. But I mean, like, as cool as he is, let's get some variety, man. I want some variety. That's like all I'm asking Like, who Charizard? This should have been... There's so many other options. Where, where, what about the, the Blastoise lovers, or, or the the ones that get snubbed the most? The Venusaur, Venus. Bulbasaur lovers. Yeah. I see you out there, and I recognize your pain. I'm personally a 
I could care less lover of the starters. I really of those don't. three? Yeah. I don't particularly have a favorite. In fact, I actually would say that I probably usually choose uh, Charmander more. Right. Believe it or not. Because, I mean, I the hard part about choosing a water starter is there's always so many good water types added into the game. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of hard with that. And grass types are actually added into that. We saw, we were looking at a... Um, breakdown of all the types actually and water type is the most common type yeah. among all pokemon as you would expect yeah it, it has the highest amount of pokemon counting single and dual typings and and i believe grass was up there within the top five as well yep so that's one of the reasons i like fire but you know want a little bit more representation for because there's more than just charizard fans out there there's more than just pikachu fans out there there's more than just eevee fans out there right which speaking of i would like to see an evolution. i agree or two i agree or two. I, I think it's it's a, it's about time. This, this is a good time to put out maybe a steel um, yeah. evolution. We've got the whole industrial thing. It would really uh, counter the Sylveon and give it that that balance a little mm-hmm. bit. I think that would be really interesting. Yeah, that would be actually. awesome. Um, and, and I think that would be a really cool way to go. We don't necessarily need two or, or multiples. Like, you know, we... Sylveon was the first time we didn't get more than one. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we don't need... We don't need them to be putting out tons of designs all the time. Yeah. But, um... Would definitely like to see that. I just like I think more than anything, as far as things that I want, I just want there to be because it's been so long since we've gotten, you know that like we mentioned this earlier, the the section of the Sinnoh decks where it's like those evolutions of yeah. previous. I want to see more of that. I do too because you know st- there's you know, a some lot of those. To, there's a lot to build. Some on. of those are like some of my favorite Pokemon. Like you know. You know, you have your Gliscors, your two evolutions. I'm a Le- huge fan of Electivire as well. Electivire. Like um, I'd love Mamo, to see Mamos, get another. Mamos yeah, Mamos Line's awesome. I'd love, I'm a huge fan of Zebstrika, even though it sucks. Um, competitively, of course. Yeah. I, I'd love to see that get an evolution and stuff like that. So, yeah, just like Obstagoon, like, there needs to be more, more like that. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of Pokemon that could definitely be more viable if they had more evolutions. I mean, think about it. Tentacool, Tentacool is not that bad, actually. But imagine getting an evolution for that. Right. A, a giant Kraken-type monster underwater <laughs> or something. Like, that'd be pretty dope, right? Um, so, th- there's, there's... There's some things you could definitely work with yeah, as far as evolutions you work go. With. Steelix from Onyx is, is pretty cool, and then they gave him the Mega to make it even more viable. Right, yeah. Um, not that we're getting but Megas anymore, stuff like that. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. But I, I definitely really like that they added that, because there are some, like... I mean, Pinsir and Tauros, I think those should Pinsir stay got without... Mega. Pinsir yeah, got they got Megas. No, Tauros didn't. Pinsir did. Right, right, right. I, I, I was just saying, like, Pinsir got one. Yeah. Um, but those guys can stay fine. I think they make sense to just have one evolution. They really just encompass that really well. Same with Lapras. But some of, like, the smaller Pokemon that looks like there's room for them to grow and become... Like, yeah, and especially from the newer, g- like the newer generations, I yeah. think. Like, you know, I think most of the stuff from the older generations has been taken care of by Gen 4. Yeah. There's um, a lot of Pokemon in uh, from Gen 2, uh, Johto, that really don't have a lot of evolutions afterwards. They really only have, like, two. Mm. And I think they could really take from there to add on to it. Um, I, I have heard some talk, with now that we have Surfetched, mm. about a possible... Um, so, I don't really agree with this, but there's been talk about it. So, Surfetch is considered like a sword Pokemon, even though I think that he's clearly wielding a he's sword and a shield. So I don't expect a particularly like a, a shield Pokemon, but people were considering that. And of course, Shuckle came into the discussion of how hilarious that would be to have an yeah. even tankier version of Shuckle. Already his base, like 180 defense yeah. or some shit. I mean, as hilarious as it would be, and as much as I'd love to see that, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, definitely love to see like some more with like Skarmory and stuff like that, but... Uh, Plus we you know, there's there's a lot of evolution lines that could use more. Uh, Taylor to Swellow, Swellow, one Ooh, of the only on. bird Pokemon that doesn't have uh, like one of one of the starting bird Pokemon. Yeah, in the starting routes that only and has Swellow was Swallow is one of those that's like right up there. Swallow's really not, good, but not, not quite, quite not because quite viable. there's other. It's no Star Raptor. Yeah, there's there's better competitors. It's no Star Raptor. It's no Talonflame. It just can't really compete with those because it doesn't have enough evolutions and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's a that's a big thing. I think, like, one of our complaints was like, you know, they don't have enough new Pokemon. I think, and and you know, I I'll say this once, I'll say it again. Um, just 
you don't have. To, it's not necessarily about designing whole new Pokemon. Right. It's more about just giving us new shit. Just, just be creative. Right, and like you know, I don't have a problem with the Galarian forms. Galarian Weezing, the thing's a meme. I, I kind of love, love it. it. I kind of love, love it as well. And it's like you know that thing's awesome. And you know, just a d giant double bong. I, you know what? I, cool. Doug Dimadome. D Doug Dimadome. Um. So yeah, there's uh, Galarian forms are cool. I just want like. And, you know, it's cool to, like, put that new modern twist on some stuff that we're familiar with. Um, but I think th there's more uh, excitement and overall just m content to be had if they were to make more, like, you know, more evolutions of yeah. stuff that we already yeah. know. Definitely. So I think that, I think that's a, a main thing that is just, like, just, just give us more new shit. I agree. I agree 100% with that. I think that that's, uh... That was part of the best, like, one of the best parts about the game is always looking forward to the new Pokemon that yeah, you get to discover. It gets kind of dull if you get the same Pokemon all the time, which is why, I mean, obviously, National Dex, during the the game, I, I don't know what to call that, not post-game, right? Um, is not a big deal because main the game. whole idea, the main game, there you go, yeah. duh. The, the main idea Once. is to experience the new Pokemon and stuff like that. Yeah. Which you don't really get to do if you have... I mean, if all your favorites are showing up, then it's really hard to, like, make room for the new Pokemon. Yeah. If you really want, you know, you really want your Arcanine on your team or whatever. I know that happened with me in uh, uh, Black and White 2. Mm. I, I, I yeah, really yeah. like Growlithe. I mean, it's freaking great looking. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's a cool design. So, so, like, well, now who would I want to put on my team in, instead of Growlithe? Or, or, or who do I get rid of for Growlithe? Yeah, and you know what? Um, and one thing I don't think we've considered enough is that um, one thing they did uh, poorly in Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon probably only added like seventy new Pokemon or something. It wasn't a lot. I think it, it was, wasn't. Yeah, it, it wasn't very much. X and Y was worse, I believe, with sixty something. something. Sixty eight. It was. I they were. They were both very close. Um, and you know what? Um, they leaked a lot of the new Pokemon before the game. Yeah, came a little out. too early. They leaked like you know they gave us a whole lot of Pokemon before the game came out, right. and you got into the game itself and you like realized there weren't a whole lot of no. Pokemon that they had previ they hadn't previously announced. It, it removed the discovery factor that's so like loved by those games. Yeah, and so one thing I don't think we've considered is that maybe they. I think it's possible they learn from their mistakes, and they're maybe only giving us a, a portion. Which I like. I don't need to see the final evolutions right away. Right, yeah. Which I think is, is good. It adds some mystery. Yeah. And it makes it so that I don't have a predetermined starter pick. I I mean, I, I, I don't have to go in knowing which one I want right away. It makes it a little yeah. harder decision, and it makes me want to play through all of them. I mean, until obviously everybody else figures out what they are, and then you find out. But, you know, it makes me want to try all Thanks, of them. Thanks, Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter. Fuck you. Talking to you. No, we love you. Just kidding. Sponsor us. I I spend a lot of time on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, more than we care to admit. Yep. Anyway, yeah, so I think that's... I More than anything, I just want there to be, like, new shit. I don't want it to be all to be given to us, like, before the game comes out. New, but here to stay. And I say that because I'm, I'm sick of these one-off gimmicks. Right. And I don't care for them. And I think the, just... You know, going around and seeing new Pokemon you've never seen before, and like that's a cool thing. Like it's the best part. You can Imagine like, seeing something in the wild, like the wild no area, fucking for the clue, first time. No fucking like, clue what, what it is. is that. Like that, just that feeling you get of discovery. That's yeah, and you the go, best part about the you games. go run into it. And it's like all right, time to and and that makes you want to catch them all. Exactly. There you it go. Gives you more incentive to 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 catch to, try and get them to all. catch them all. If you know Bidoof is going to evolve into a Babero that does nothing, I would have never. Actually, I would have still caught well, it. I've got, a, I've got a. No, I've got a soft spot for Bidoof. I'm not going to lie. You know what? I've got a soft spot we, for all those crappy normal Pokemon. We need, it, we need a Galarian Bidoof. I would. I would so love that dude. Just sword teeth. There you go. Fuck yes. Sword teeth. B barrel with fucking like sharp ass. Exactly. Teeth. Hell yeah. That would be dope. But I'd be all for it. I, I've got a soft spot in my in my heart for Bidoof, I, but again, people would not have caught him if they knew that he'd be ba as bad as he yeah, is. Yeah, and you know what? I think we've only gotten reveals for, like, what, two Galarian forms or something? Yeah, and then the Galarian not including, evolution. Not including Surfetch? Yeah, Surfetch is an evolution. Yeah, so I think, I think there's definitely more of those that they're not telling us. I agree, and I think that that's... I, I do hope that it's from different regions, and that, of course. And yeah, and that gives us some element of mystery, and, which It's is just cool. because, like, new Pokemon, like, that have just come... Like, the, you know, the more recent generations, just because they're new doesn't mean you can't already uh, 
give them some new forms and stuff. Yeah. Make it so that people want to use the more recent generation stuff more than just going back to to Kanto all the time and stuff like that. Yeah, just reusing Pokemon you've already used right? before. Make a million some other times. stuff more viable. That's all we want to see. Yeah, we just want to. We want a all, fun, a fun experience with some Pokemon new Pokemon. Are not created equal. Yeah, and that's. But we would like to see it. Yeah, I mean, you know what? And that's fine. And you know what? It's it's inherent that all Pokemon will not be created right, equal. Exactly. Some some are going to be shittier than others. Right. Um, as, Metapod's as, always going to suck. Sorry, yeah, he, he's not. He's not going to make anyone's final team anytime soon. No. Um. But and you know what? Neither will fucking Butterfree. So. Yeah, that's true. Um. So that, uh, you know, n not all Pokemon will be created equal, but it's like, you know, at least just you put put the spotlight on the on the new boys. You know, we we're it's cool that you're bringing back the old familiar faces, but it's like, you know, when you make a new Pokemon game, a brand new generation, right. we want to see the new boys. I mean, the thing is, I want to see uh, I want to see some some skiddos and go-goats mingling with the wooloos and stuff like that right. and the pens and stuff in the farms but throw in some mill tanks just have a giant freaking ranch with all those poke like yeah and maybe give them some different forms too you know add, add that in yeah it's just like you know what i just i more than anything i just want it to have a, a whole lot of new material Especially stuff that they haven't told us yet. Yes. I'm really... And you know what? That's the more exciting new, part. And you know what? The updates as far as like new Pokemon go, they've been pretty sparse. They've been few yeah. and far between. So, you know, we've probably only gotten maybe two or three since the original announcement in February. And that's, been, that's a long-ass time. Yeah. So, um, maybe, maybe three or four. I can't count. But either way, it's like... I'm glad that they haven't given us too much. It's kind of like Avengers Endgame when... The, the whole idea is not to spoil it because it's so much cooler when you get to go in and experience it for the first time. Yeah. Because it's such an amazing movie. And it, the game has the... I mean, all Pokemon games always have the potential to be amazing because yeah. it's Pokemon. And right. it's great. So you could... I mean, the less you know, the the more room for, like, just awe and disbelief there is. Yeah, and that's always... Your the, expectations the are lower. Thing. So when your expectations are lower, they're a lot easier to exceed. So. Yeah. That's just, the, that's just the concept I live by. You yep. just go in with your expectations yeah. low, yeah. and either you're not disappointed or you're very impressed. Right. That's why everyone should have low expectations of me. So when I fail, it's not a surprise. And when I do good, wow. good job. Oh, thanks. thanks. Wow, I really expected you to fail. See, Pokemon teaches us life lessons. Always go. have low expectations. Uh, exactly. That's life lessons from, like, two college students. Yeah. No, it's legit, though. Yeah. Low you know, expectations. If you're getting something for free, like, you know, free pizza, it's not going to be the best pizza. Don't, don't fucking expect much of that pizza. Yeah. It's like, free. Like, you're just happy to have it's it like because Domino's. it's free. It's like Domino's. I like Domino's. If Do you you're like talking Domino's? shit about Domino's, I'm not here for it. You like Domino's? Yeah, I like really? Domino's. Yeah. Huh. I haven't had Domino's in a long ass time. I, I've i recently converted. Really? Yeah. Did you order some recently or something? Not that re Like, within coming back to college. You know what? I don't think, like... I think Domino's is like I think they're pretty good. I think the Their last crust is fire, really. And they always got really good deals. If you can get the two for twelve or two for thirty, whatever it is, where you get two items for six ninety or five ninety nine, six bucks, it's great. What a what a steal! What a steal that right? is, right? Domino's is fucking cheap, but you know what? Yeah. Like I feel like I feel like they get shat on a little too much. Domino's, I don't, yeah. Well, yeah, they sh they should stick with pizza. I don't. I'm not really here for all this oh, like I, expanding I, I, into these different I things. I agree. I'm never gonna order a sandwich from. A pizza place, right? I'm, I'm gonna go they're to like like, a, like Italian places. I'd order a sandwich from, right? Like you know, like you know those restaurants where you go in and it's like you know proper Italian. They have yeah. like subs, pizza, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, I would order a sandwich. From but not. There. I'm not gonna. I mean, wings kind of go with pizza. If you got but fucking really pizza, if you got fucking pizza, pizza, pizza your name or your name's Domino's, I'm not gonna order a sandwich from you. Nor am yeah. I gonna order chicken. That's wings. not your. That's not really your thing. Nor am I gonna you know? like. I'm not gonna order chicken wings either. I will get a salad because salads can come from anywhere because Sal it's just. It's literally just fucking lettuce. And yeah, you just you just take how, it from the ground you, and wash it. How put can you it fuck in up a, a salad? Yeah, exactly. Can you fuck up a salad? Is that possible? It depends on if they're making their own dressing and stuff. Oh, that's my only thing. But you can't mess up the actual vegetables. Right. The vegetables. 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 Yeah. Vegetables. Not sponsored. We are the Not yet. pirates who don't do anything. Is that from it? Yeah, dude. I'm a pickle. Not no. I'm a cucumber. Not a pickle. I had a keychain that said that when you push the button on it. <laughs> Pretty cool. Don't know where it wait, is. Do you know? Wait, do you know where is my hairbrush? I've heard of that one. Yeah, oh, I know that where one. Where is my hairbrush? I definitely know that one. Oh, where? Okay, but Veggie Tales is a lie because the tomato is a fruit. 
Dude, you just dropped the bomb. Get back here. <laughs> Dude, you just dropped the bomb on this. That's all I got to say. Dude, that you just you just basically destroyed an entire good Christian franchise for children. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, VeggieTales. But we've gone off the rails. It's time to end this. Um, we, we talked about a whole lot of shit. That was a great time. My voice is a little tired. But other than that, uh, this was a dope time. I think we're probably going to record one more. Just a, a something. miscellaneous. Something. I'm going to come up with, I'm gonna come up with something. Something to talk about because we can't just talk about fucking random shit. I think that's actually part of the fun. Is talking it? about just random, like oh, a very you know miscellaneous podcast. You know podcast. what, we, we did like, we did just go, we went You know, you just we, moved from one topic we went, to the next. We went from Pokemon to pizza in like no time at all. Yeah. That was pretty impressive, pretty I gotta say. You talk about low expectation, I mean, you're learning from us. Right? Don't deny it. We, you know what, we could, we, we, I might be, we might be able to pull that off, you know. Is that a gang symbol? I have no idea, I thought it was just a peace sign. Oh, you're holding it, it's like this. You gotta hold, no, you gotta hold it forward, dude. Oh hey, What does that mean? It means it means I love you in Spanish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Te amo, mi amor. I thought it was oh, hi, right? I must. <laughs> oh, I said it in Spanish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, te te. I love you, my love. Is that what I said? Yeah. Te amo, mi amor. I love you, my love. Yeah. Te amo is just I love you. Yeah. yeah. I love you, my love. Yeah. I love you. Te amo, love. mi amigo. I love you, my friend. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Te amo, mi... What is dick in Spanish? Pene. Te amo, mi pene. Like the pasta? No, dude. It, pene is penis. Yeah, but like pene pasta, you know? No. That's like where the, <laughs> that's where it's no. associated because pene pasta is shaped like this. And you're... You know what a penis is shaped like. <laughs> Less, yeah, you sure do. <laughs> We're staring. What are we doing camera. here? We're staring at We're talking about penises. What are we doing here? We're talking about penises. No, on this earth. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can answer that one. Uh, we're here to talk about Pokemon and pizza. Not anymore. Not anymore. We, we're past that. You know point. what's crazy? What? When you look into space, you're looking into the past because of the speed. You're only looking as you know as far as the speed of light. Because that's why it's like light years. So like, because it takes so long for light to reach us, a planet like way many light years away looking at us could still see dinosaurs because the light of our time has not reached them yet, so they can't perceive it. Okay, Neil deGrasse Tyson. How cool is that, dude? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Your voice isn't nearly as cool as Neil deGrasse Tyson's, but I don't think anyone's. No, it's is. not. Anyone's. I don't think anyone's. Morgan worth. Freeman. Well, yeah. I don't, that's the undisputed number one. Fair enough. Yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson's close, but Morgan Freeman, goddamn. That I, I he probably I mean uh, maybe in his heyday he got laid with all kinds of women just by like serenading them with his voice. This used to be about Pokemon. Now it's not. <laughs> anyway, that's that's enough. Michael and I have gone on one too many tangents, or maybe eight too many tangents. Um, I can't count that high, so we're gonna go ahead and end this off. Thank you all for uh, fucking. Watching this, I don't know why I did that. Like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe with a W. Subscribe. 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 All we'll right. Put the subscribe button.